shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to episode 10 of the P40F build. Now we're actually starting a little bit in the middle of things because as I was recording last night, I didn't realize that my microphone had run out of batteries. And when I was going back and ingesting footage for episode 9 today, I realized that the entire conclusion of it has no sound. Uh, the same is true for the first several clips I shot for episode 10. Oops. So I'm basically starting fresh and thankfully haven't gotten too far into the weathering stuff that we're going to be playing with in this installment. So to catch up really quickly, all the markings are done. It's now time to start in on weathering and I am beginning with the panel line washes. For these, I'm using a whole host of various ammo colors. Got dark red brown for the red on the roundels. We've got orange brown, which I ended up not really using much of. Uh, medium tan, same thing, it's just way too light. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to part 10 of the P40F build. So we're actually starting a little bit in the middle of things because unbeknownst to me, when I was filming the first several clips of this episode, I didn't realize that my microphone had run out of batteries. And so it's just, static and silence. And rather than forcing y'all to sit through that, I figured I would just go ahead and kind of pick up here and carry on. So basically all that we've done in this first stage of weathering is panel line washes. And for that, I used multiple different tones. Um, Ammo's deep brown, mainly focused on the dark earth areas. Neutral brown for the Middlestone areas. I th also gave a shot to this orange brown, but it was way too reddish looking once it actually got on top of the paint. So I stuck with the neutral brown instead. I also tried out medium tan, which I actually forgot to cover up in one little area right over here. And you can see it's just very, very light and doesn't really catch what I'm going for. So it's also not playing. Dark red brown used on the underside round rules. And also on the underside, we have the pair of blue gray and blue dirt. And so these are a simple matter of, as you can see here, sort of brushing them in and among panel lines and rivets, waiting a bit and coming back and wiping them off. The underside has already been treated and it's looking pretty good. I really like the way that these things are picking out the detail in the rivets and the panel lines in a way that really seems to kind of bring out everything that's going on in the paint. I don't know if maybe sort of separating it off into sections where the eye can focus helps bring all those different tones to life a bit more, but whatever it is, it's working. So that's pretty cool. Now on the upper surfaces, I've done basically the same thing as on the lower. And for example, this wing is pretty much taken care of. I think I still need to go back in and clean up a few areas for some reason panel wash a bit harder into the guns than it did into the MRP and is a bit more hesitant to come out. I don't know if that's a factor of the deep brown feeling like it has a different consistency overall or if it's the guns paint somehow but whatever the case a little bit of thinner on a q-tip kind of wiped in there helps lift up any of that sort of weird skunk staining shit that happens. But let's go over here and clean up this next one. You can kind of see what this looks like. And this may be a bit stubborn because it is sat overnight. But at the same time, in my experience in the past, that doesn't really matter that much with these panel line washes. You can see it comes right up and it leaves that little skunk strip staining. I think it's the deep brown because it's also doing shit on the uh, MRP dark earth. this up a bit. Come on, focus, you piece of shit. You can see how there's a lot of personality going on in the paint right there, though. It's pretty cool to see. But yeah, the skunk stains are not something I'm happy to see. 
mainly just because it means more pain in the ass to clean up. So to clean up some of these skunk stripes here, basically we have a Q-tip. It's got a little bit of mineral spirits on it. We just come in and lightly let it do its thing. Do, 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 do. And it doesn't really affect the stuff that's already worked its way down into the recessed detail. It just helps keep the surface. I'm getting those little stripes that we don't want. So there we go. All right, now that the panel line washers are in a pretty good place, before I move on to the next step, I want to go ahead and black out the shell ejection ports. So for this, I've got some Vallejo black that has been thinned down. A little tiny brush. There's gonna be a little bit of staining around these two, so perfect neatness is not really required, but we're gonna go for as best as we can do anyway. So I'm just about ready to clear coat the P40 and move on to oils. And the reason that I wanna clear coat is kind of a two-parter. First of all, I wanna lock in the panel lining that's been done, because if I touch thinner to this thing and start playing around with it, it's gonna remove all the panel line stuff. And what's the point of doing it just to remove it? The other reason is that across the surface, it feels different in different places. So out here, there's a bit of scuffiness going on, I would say. In here, it's perfectly smooth. And I wanna just get a uniform, balanced feel to the surface before I start hitting it with oils. But before I do that, I wanna bring in a bit of armor style chipping and kind of go about it ass backwards. So with aircraft chipping, with subtractive chipping, with hairspray and all that kind of stuff, you put down a layer of silver, you put down your hairspray, you put down your paint, and then you come in here and you scrub the paint away to reveal the, chi the chips underneath, right? That doesn't really work as well with armor, mainly because most armor things aren't made out of aluminum. And so when it chips, it quickly rusts or turns dark and basically provides a different look than what you would get in an aircraft. But the way to do chipping in armor, at least the way that I've seen and the way that I've picked up and enjoy, uh, comes from Uncle Night Shift, and that is to come in and paint basically little slightly lighter than the color of the paint chips, and then come in and paint inside those with like a dark gray, uh, or like a dark, dirty brown gray kind of a thing. And it looks really cool and it works really well in armor and it doesn't really translate to aircraft again because of the need for the aluminum and the little tiny chips and all that kind of stuff. It, you can't do that with like a dark gray and have it look decent. However, I was thinking, what if I took that, that core step of putting down something that is lighter than the base paint kind of around the outside of where these chips are. And so I tested it on my Hellcat Mule, just in a few places. Then you can see right up here, basically along that panel line, very, very subtle, but it shows up under the right light. Just a slightly darker, or sorry, slightly lighter little chip area. We've also got some on, do, 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 come on, focus. Well... You might have to trust me. There's some right up here on the leading edge. And then there's some here on this little hinge around the access door. So basically, I want to do that on the P40. And to do this, I've got um, some Mr. Hobby Middlestone. So they're the gun's aqueous line. Mixed with some Tamiya buff to lighten it up. And... Take a little brush, a little tiny thing like this. Do, 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 do. And then we just come in here where there's some chips and just kind of dab, 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 dab. And to make this work, basically, I took the 
Middlestone, the buff, added a bunch of X20A and then added some Tamiya acrylic retarder so that it's actually somewhat brushable. I'm not going for like big brush stoke elimination business here, but definitely don't want it lifting itself up like Tamiya paints can typically do if you just try to brush them by themselves. Okay, so I've got a bunch of these little lighter areas painted around the chipping. You can also see some up here on the cowl, like around those chips. I've also added a bunch around the fasteners to the cowl. You can kind of see right in this area right here. Kind of carried that over down onto the side there. That'll be cool when I pick those things out with silver. And now it is time to move on to dealing with the dark earth. And for the dark earth, I'm actually going to be using a nicely thinned down version of Tamiya's XF72, which is their JG SDF Brown, so the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force. Uh, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more desaturated than the gun's dark earth. I need to give that a second to dry to see if it's even going to show. If not, we might have to lighten it very, very slightly. Okay, so I've added two drops of buff to this to lighten it up just a little bit. I don't know if y'all can hear in the background, but there is a somebody going a bit fast and furious on the nearby highway. They've been doing this for the past several nights and has driven our little neighborhood Facebook group into quite a tizzy. Okay, so I've done a little bit of the brown outlining, whatever, and I'm not feeling it as much as I am with the middle stone, so we're going to skip that and move into picking out some of these cowl fasteners. And also some of the ones right here along the wing root fillet. And for this, I'm going to go back. I've been doing this with a couple different things. Uh, some oil brushers are really good for this. But I also really like the AK Extreme Metal, which is an enamel. So we can kind of treat it like oils. Hmm. Why is it not working for me today? <laughs> this is annoying. Well, I guess we're going to switch to oil brushers then. I don't know what's going on there. I'm not picking out all of these, but we're going to pick out most of them. Okay, so here are a bunch of fasteners along the cowl area and some of them back here onto the wing fillet that have been picked out with silver. Again, basically just dab a little bit in there, come in with a Q-tip and some mineral spirits, remove as you see fit, and voila, we have some fun little picked out details up front. All right, time to let this sit. Uh, going to clear it next, and then once we get through the clearing, it is on to all kinds of fun with hardcore weathering. So whenever an aircraft gets to this stage, basically right on the cusp of weathering, I tend to second guess myself a lot in terms of the order of attack that I'm going to take. And I know I've been talking about basically putting on a clear coat and then sanding that down a bit and then weathering, but I also really, on this one, want to experiment with using clear coats to separate some of the oil work and maintain a bit more contrast than I normally would. So, with that in mind, I'm going to do a little bit of light sanding first. And then we're going to move into some fading oils. And then after that, we'll clear coat those and move into the dirt and grime and all that fun shit. So, I've got my little Tamiya sanding sponge here. This is the same one that we use to sand the decals down. 
got some water. And basically, it's just light, light sanding. Nothing aggressive at all. Barely any pressure. Basically just want to knock down any roughness that's going on. And I can almost hear it as I go. i to listen really closely, but it's there. Oh yeah, that's a big difference. All right, the P40 has received a very light smoothing sand, and now it's time to start playing with oils for the lights and the fading and things like that. So I've squeezed several out onto a dental pad, and let's go through what I've got to work with here. This is basically a mixture of Windsor & Newton and ABT 502 oils. So up here in the upper left is some Windsor & Newton transparent white. Um, I absolutely love this stuff. It does have a tendency to go a little bit blue casted on certain things, but I don't think that's really an issue on a tropical scheme. Next up is moving in is some ABT 502 faded white. Then I believe the next one is dust. Yay, dust. The next one I'm honestly not very sure about. I've never used it before, but I'm curious to see what it does. And that is some transparent gold ochre. Ooh, interesting. Next to that, we've got some good old Naples yellow. It's a favorite of uh, working on desert and tropical schemes, I know. Then I've got some ABT 502 dead flesh. Uh, it might be a little bit green, but at the same time, I think it's not all that far off from some of like the middle stone tones that we've got going on. So could be a fun one to play with. And finally, we have light sand, which is, I, I've never seen sand look like this. This looks like fucking sulfur, but uh, maybe can help pop color here and there. So that is the colors that we're working with. And honestly, of these, I'm not sure I'm going to use that much of all of them. Uh, again, this transparent golden ochre, a bit of a question mark. Same with the light sand. So I'm going to zoom in nice and tight so y'all can see me working. We're going to start over here on the port wing. Okay, so we've got some transparent white, some Naples yellow, and a little bit of dust. Basically just come in, start working it in. This brush, put some fucking uh, brush restore on it, it's flaking off now, but no biggie. This is what the transparent white does. It basically very slightly fades things out. And again, it's important to remember this is all fading and lights and whatnot and it will get sealed and some darker tones will come in on top of it for sort of dirt and grime and whatnot but trying to respect that these are serving in north africa not the most um, gentle climate on the planet So yeah, if we look, I know that the lights kind of fuck things up. But if you look at that sort of leading panel compared to what comes after it, you can definitely see it's, it's a 
dirtier thing that it's doing. I know that the light is not making this the easiest thing to see, so it's a little bit heavy looking right now. Next up, we're going to do this fun thing where I put a little bit of thinner onto a sponge. And we just dab it around. I think I needed more thinner than that. And I'll break it up a little bit. Also great at introducing Florm into the into the mix, which is a pain in the ass. Let's give that a few minutes to cook off and come on back. Okay, so I've done fading work sort of across the airframe, and now I'm gonna do another little fun thing to kind of vary it up even more. So I've got the brush a little bit wet with some ABT 502 Matte Effects Thinner. I've got an airbrush needle. I'm going to come in and I'm going to just flick a little bit of this over the dark earth. And let it kind of break things up a bit. And I'm just letting it work on its own, pretty much. And you can kind of see what's happening with it over on this side as it dries. So, sort of in this area here, you can see it kind of drying out and it's giving us some interesting sort of little dots and tide mark things and stuff like that, which will be obscured as we move into the darker tones. But, Definitely sets up an interesting look. All right, so fading and lights are down on the upper surfaces, and I'm giving them a little bit of time to set up. And so we're going to move around to the underside and play with this stuff. So the underside wasn't exactly subject to fading the same way that the upper surfaces would be, but we're still talking about operating in a desert environment, and that makes things dusty and all that kind of stuff. So... Fuck. So in addition to my cadre of dust tones here, which I'm not going to use all these, probably it'll be transparent white, faded white, and dust getting to play here. I'm also bringing in this copper oxide blue from ABT 502. And then I'm going to bring in some potentials from Windsor & Newton. So the first of them is Ultramarine Violet. Yikes, that's a slurry of color there. And some light cobalt turquoise. My thinking with these is I mix these together and I get some sort of variation of azure. 
so I probably won't end up using it. But hey, we can expend a little bit of oil, right? All right, first things first, let's see how these mix up. Let's see what we get. I don't know. We'll see. It doesn't look really anywhere close. All right, let's go ahead and add a bit of dust, because we know we're going to want that. Particularly like around the wheels. Around the leading edges. Cowl. Okay, so I've got some dust tones going on around the underside, principally streaming off back of the gear bays, a few also off these underside vents, and then just some generalized stuff kind of along basically the center area of like the wings and the fuselage, sort of in this space. Areas that the prop would be kicking up dust, the wheels would be churning it up as they kind of taxi around, etc., and some areas in here where there's going to be fluid leaks and whatnot coming out of the radiator that would accumulate dust and shit like that. So this is basically just kind of like basing for stuff that's going to come in the future. There's some back along tailwheel. There's some on the underside of the uh, stabilizers, etc. One thing I need to do before I can go in and start adding dust into the gear bays themselves is I need to pick out all of those little ribs and shit. And for that, I'm going to be using an aqua gloss magic wash type thing this is aqua gloss a few drops of tamiya nato black some water and some derivan matisse surface tension breaker to break the tension applying this is not that tricky but this is the wrong ass brush for it now there's not much to applying this stuff i know i've walked through it before on a couple other builds basically it just involves getting in and kind of Brushing shit in, letting it sit, letting the natural leveling properties of the aqua gloss do its thing, etc. One thing you do want to try to do is pop any bubbles that pop up. It's not entirely possible to get all of them, but better if you can. And it doesn't matter. And here, at least, if these are a little bit dirty because there's going to be dust going in there, the dust will obviously obscure some of the action. Okay, so I gave the magic watch in the gear base overnight to set up and then came back with some ABT 502 dust and this big fat brush and basically went in here and essentially stippled some grimy dust down into the gear base. Now I'm moving on to some speckling. And you can kind of see it going on up over here. And so we need to do this side and we need to kind of get in the middle area as well. So to do that, I've got some dust that I have mixed in with some thinner to make a little slurry. Basically touch the brush to the end of it. And I'm gonna flick off most of it on an airbrush needle until I get little tiny specks. Okay, so now airbrush needle, brush, mostly emptied of, of the uh, oil slurry. And then we're just gonna come in here and go flick, 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 flick. And we're gonna do a little bit here in the... Middle area as well. So just to represent some maybe heavier bits kind of flopping around as the tires spin and as the prop kicks things back. Because it's not fun if it's all just hazy, blurry shit. Okay, next we're going to go and take a little bit of... Naples yellow, 
mix it up and do the same thing. So when you look at it without the light glaring off of it, you can see we've got some cool spatter effects going on there. Okay, so as the final step for this installment, I'm going to go ahead and spray a coat of MRP-125 semi-gloss, basically to seal in these light oils that we put down so they won't be shuffled off when I start coming in with darker things. Alright, so in this installment, I put down panel line washes and removed the excess, and then moved into the lighter oils to represent things like fading and dust and all that fun shit. To close things out, I put down a coat of MRP-125 semi-gloss that will protect those lighter oils from being shifted around by darker oils to come, and provide hopefully a bit more lasting contrast instead of everything sort of muddying toward the middle. So that's a wrap for this installment. Be sure to stick around as the adventures of the P40F continue. Later.